I think all of us are ready to go over a solution to the hundreds challenge. But before we really dive into this problem, it is only right that I begin by expressing a sincere gratitude to every single person who participated in the challenges, whether by sharing your solution in the comment section down below, proposing a problem, or even just watching the videos on the series. Without your support and encouragement, we would have never made it this far. And once again, I thank all of you. So what is the Honduras challenge? Well, we wish to find all ordered triple A, B, C, such that A, B, and C are all real numbers, satisfying the following system of equations. And we have a fairly symmetric system of equations given below. We have a squared, b squared, c squared in a row. And then for a squared, we have an expression in b and we have an expression in c. For b squared, we have an expression in a, we have an expression in c. So there is a, b, and c in every single equation. And you should also realize for the second and third column, a variable is being cubed and we are dividing by three times the variable. So there is a common motif that connects every single equation. So we want to take advantage of the symmetry if possible. How do we achieve that? Well, the solution I'm about to present to you is the one proposed by Yasin Zhaoui, who communicated to me this problem and a solution devised by himself. And the Yasin Zhaoui solution is not necessarily the shortest one. You can find a shorter solution in the comment section of this challenge video. But I believe the solution presented by Yasin Zhaoui is the most elegant and the most beautifully ties together this common motif, the symmetry that abounds within this system of equations. So let's get to it. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to isolate parts of the system of equations that are very similar to each other. More specifically, we're going to focus on just the pair A and B and we see two equations that has A and B within them. We have this equation and we have one right below. Instead of thinking about A, B, and C at the same time, we can just think about two of them, A and B. Of course, we have one more equation that has A and B inside them, but this equation is structurally speaking, not the same as the first two. And we want to take advantage of the similarity if possible. So we will just focus on these two. And later on, when we want to look at A and C or B and C, we can repeat the same thing. For A and C, we can look at this equation and this equation. And for B and C, we can look at this equation and this equation. So this nice symmetry is allowing us to repeat our argument given that it works out the first time. So to begin with, let me write down the two equations that we wish to focus our attention on. Here we have them. Rewriting the first one, we don't want to have anything in the denominator, if possible. We're going to get 3a squared b, multiplying by 3b to both sides, we're going to get 3a squared b, and we can take away b cubed to get 3a squared b minus b cubed is equal to 9 times the square root of 3. And for the second equation, let's make it in the same form. Let's multiply by 3a to both sides, so we have 3ab squared and we can move that over to the right side. To get a cubed minus 3ab squared is going to be 10. Minus 10 was moved over to the left side, of course. Now, why did we rearrange equations like this? Well, because there is something that catches our attention. We see a cubed, we see b cubed, and we see 3a squared b and 3ab squared. What's that making you think of? If you said a plus b cubed or a minus b cubed, you're very close. Because when we evaluate a plus b cubed, we get a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. So that's encouraging us to maybe add these two equations. So add this equation plus this equation. But we don't quite have that on the left hand side. We want to have a plus b cubed, but we have a minus b cubed. So the next thing you may think of is so why don't we just do a minus b cubed then? But then we get a cubed. Now instead of plus b, we have minus b. So we're going to have instead of 3a squared b, we're going to have a 3a squared times a minus b. So we're going to get a cubed minus 3a squared b 
and we're going to square minus b, so that's going to stay the same, and the plus b cubed is going to turn to minus b cubed. And do we have it when we add them up? We do not, because instead of plus 3a squared b, we have minus 3a squared b. The signs have changed. <sighs> we are so close, yet seemingly so far. Is there a way to force this reversal of sign? Instead of having minus, make it plus, and instead of plus, we have a minus. Is there an algebraic trick that's going to alternate the sign? And there is. Instead of thinking about a plus b cubed, we are going to think about a plus b i cubed. Because a plus b i cubed is going to be, instead of b, we have a b i. So we're just going to substitute bi into b. So we're going to get a cubed plus 3a squared bi. And ib squared is going to turn into minus b squared. So minus 3ab squared. And bi cubed is going to turn into minus b cubed i. And we have this reversal of sign. We have a plus 3a squared b and we have a minus 3ab squared. So having noticed this, the trick, we have a trick. We can multiply both sides of the first equation by i, then add up the two equations. Because then on the left-hand side, we are going to get a plus bi cubed, because that's precisely what we have. On the right-hand side, we're going to get 10 plus 9 square root of 3i. I think we are onto something and we should be very excited, but let's really think about this. Can we find a and b just from this equation? Well, we know a plus bi, looking at this equation, is cube root of 10 plus 9 times the square root of 3i, but every complex number other than 0 is going to have a 3 cube root. So just this equation by itself, is not allowing us to conclude a is equal to some real number and b is equal to some real number. So instead of trying to force ourselves to go from this equation to a equals to something or b equals to something, can we instead go to some equation, can we produce some equation in terms of a and b that is going to help us proceed forward? And one way of doing that is to take absolute value of both sides. And taking absolute value does a very nice job of turning a complex number into a real number. And I think we can garner some information about a and b alongside with it. So what do we get? Well, on the right hand side, we are going to get square root of 10 squared plus 9 times the square root of 3 squared. Because in the complex plane, we have a 10 plus 9 times the square root of 3i, and we want to find this magnitude, this absolute value, and we can just use the Pythagorean theorem, 10 squared plus 9 square root of 3 squared, and on the right hand side, we have absolute value of a plus bi cubed, it can be proven that absolute value of some complex number cubed is equal to absolute value of the complex number cubed, so we can switch the cube and the absolute value sign, and the absolute value of a plus bi that's going to be using the same reasoning, square root of a squared plus b squared. a and b are real numbers, and we are cubing this equation. Now, squaring both sides is going to allow us to get rid of the square root sign. So we have a squared plus b squared cubed is equal to 10 squared plus 9 square root of 3 squared. And this is 100 plus 81 times 3 to 43, or 343. And here you should shout with jubilance because cube root of 343 is 7. So we have a squared plus b squared is equal to 7. That is fantastic because using the symmetry, we can go through the same argument to find b squared plus c squared and a squared plus c squared. For example, let's quickly do b squared plus c squared. I'll leave the last one to you, the viewers, if you're interested. For b squared plus c squared, we're going to focus on this equation, which is going to be 3b squared c minus c cubed is 28. And this equation, which is b cubed minus 3bc squared is negative 45 times the square root of 3, 
if we multiply the first equation by i and we add them up, we are going to get b plus c i cubed on the left hand side, whereas on the right hand side we have a minus 45 times square root of 3 plus 28i. Taking absolute value of both sides and squaring both sides is going to get us a b squared plus a c squared cubed, this thing squared plus a this thing squared, which is a 45 squared times 3 plus 28 squared. And you can either use a calculator or go through some computation to show that this thing is in fact 19 cubed. So b squared plus c squared is going to be 19. The analogous process is going to yield that a squared plus c squared is 20. So we have simplified the system of equations to just these three very nice looking equations. But how do we proceed? Well, we have a 2a squared, we have a 2b squared, and we have 2c squared. So let's take advantage of another symmetry and add up every single equation, getting us a 2a squared plus a 2b squared plus a 2c squared on the left hand side and the 26, 46 on the right hand side. That's telling us a squared plus b squared plus c squared is 23, and we are somewhat close to being done, because now we can subtract this equation minus this equation to find the c squared, we can subtract this equation minus this equation to find a squared, and we can do the same thing with this equation and the last one to find b squared. Let's do so, this one minus this one, gets us c squared is 16, and doing the same thing, we get a squared is 23 minus 19, and we get b squared is 23 minus 20. Now that's nice, but there may be some extraneous solution, so we still gotta check that every solution works, or does not work. For a, it's raining cats and dogs outside, I'm not sure if you can hear the thunder, I'm digressing. For, for a, we can take a look at this equation, since we know the value of b squared, being 3, so we know 3 is equal to a cubed minus 10 over 3a, or 9a has to be a cubed minus 10. Of course, a is either 2 or negative 2, and we see that when a is 2, we have 18 being 8 minus 10 or negative 2, that's not satisfied, so a cannot be 2. Can a be negative 2 possibly? Well, we get negative 18, is negative 8 minus 10? So a equals to negative 2 satisfies this condition. Of course, this by itself does not mean a equals to negative 2 has to be true. We still gotta check a equals to negative 2 after we find the value for b and c. But we know for sure that if a solution exists, then a cannot be 2, it has to be negative 2. Before we finish this up, let's take this time to recognize Yasin Zhaoyi once again for creating this problem and the solution. And we also recognize Stepan Smith for being the very first person to correctly answer this problem when it was posted. A huge shout out to both Yasin Zawi and Stepan Smith. For b, we can look at the equation on the top. We get a squared is 4, so 12b has to be b cubed plus 9 times the square root of 3, where we know b is either square root of 3 or negative square root of 3. We see that when b is negative square root of 3, we're going to have 6 times the square root of 3 on the right hand side, whereas we're going to have negative number on the left hand side, so that's out of question. b has to be positive square root of 3, and we see that it satisfies it. 12 times square root of 3 is 3 times the square root of 3 plus 9 times the square root of 3. So if a solution exists, we know b has to be positive square root of 3. And using the same reasoning, you should see that if a solution exists, c has to be negative 4. From here, the only thing we have to do is plug this in into the system to make sure every equation is satisfied, and you can show that indeed they do, which means we have found the unique solution to this system of equations, and we are done.